We are going to give him a little bit of uh, chin hair. Or lower jaw hair. Whatever you want to call it. So it's it's just like I said. Um, it is once you start fiber meshing, you are going to find yourself just kind of repeating um, a lot of a couple of basic steps. Because to be frank, hair kind of um, like on a per model basis, you're gonna find it hair has a fair amount of consistency. Um, so you know, like you're not gonna have like. A human head, for example, that has, you know, silky hair and then um, significantly more curly hair randomly. I know there are hairstyles that do that, but those are very specific cases. Most of the time, it is going to stick to a certain type of hair. Um, and so the process by which you, 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 make, you make the hair and represent the hair is generally going to... Um, kind of stick around, uh, say the same, I guess. Um, whoa, whoopsie. Didn't mean to do that. I think it's time, oh. This is, oh, okay. Um, so one thing I've been noticing about ZBrush that I need to test out, but, um, ZBrush likes to rotate according to whatever sub tool you have selected. And so if you select a sub tool that's just really, really far off somewhere, you get weird rotations like this. Um, this is usually resolved by what you use to frame. So for example, actually, nope. Well, I, I, I need to investigate that. It's something that I recently kind of started to realize as a trend. And it's getting a little chubby. That extra... Oh, ooh, no. That extra... Um, that extra chin hair is giving him a considerable weight increase. I don't quite know how I feel about that yet. I think this should be fine though. Okay. I think I'm going to go for. Hmm. Hmm. Custom one. Um, so if you're looking for what this is, uh, this is a kind of custom UI feature. Um, I believe I stole this off of Rafael Grissetti. And what I mean by stealing is I saw him use it once. I figured out what it was made of and made myself one. Um, I imagine you could probably get it um, as a downloadable UI. I usually just make my own UIs because it's just so fun and simple. But um, what it is basically is you go into documents and you go into uh, Z Applink properties and you can save custom, um, I guess model positions would be the name? Custom transform? Yeah, I guess they're, they're called transforms. So basically Any single time you click on it, it brings it right back to wherever it was when you first hit custom. Um, so I just have two down here. And then I brought over the light settings down here as well. I have a few lights that I can save. And I like having all of this here because what this allows me to do later on is that I can grab one of the non madcap materials. And I'm going to not use that one. Actually, wait, isn't skin shade? Yeah, skin shape is a non-matcap non material. So the difference between a matcap material and a non-matcap material is um, 
whether or not the light is baked into them. So a matte cap material, for example, has... Okay, this is going to be a little difficult to show on this model. Uh, where is, where is his head? Solo. So... All oh, right. Um, hang on. Okay. So a matte cap material has the shade, the sh um, shadows baked into it. Um, whereas a non matte cap material does not, and you can move the lighting around. So notice the difference is actually pretty dramatic. So non matte cap material, right? It was, was this one. No, wait. Well, actually. The, same thing applies, but um, matte cap material. Do you see how moving the lighting does nothing? But here, you can actually see it on the little bolts as well. So this is a matte cap material. This is uh, the green clay. This is one of my favorite um, sculpting materials. It's the, uh, it's this one. I like it. It's really neat. Um, so you can see that as I move. The light around these three change and this one does not at all right and if I click on one of these you can see that now it shifts with the light and um, this is very important to know because it just gives you more control over how you render things um, by knowing this now of course as soon as you hit BPR um, there will still be you know like um, this will still be lit according to your light settings. You know, uh, it's just that you can't see it in the preview. You know, and it kind of adds the shadow on top. Whereas here, you know, it doesn't have any pre-shading really. Um, and usually, the shadows are actually um, they're pretty predictable, fairly predictable. Um, so mine's skin shader, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put the paint back onto this, and I'm gonna unsolo it, and I right. I forgot about that. <laughs> So the material I'm using for the eyes is not a uh, matte cap, and so every time I move the light, it looks like he's moving his uh, his eye. Um, I vaguely remember just, you know, having a lot of fun with this. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is that I'm going to select the eyes, and I'm going to turn off the material every once in a while. Um, so I'm going to pick... A direction for him to look at. I'm gonna render that out. Oh, wait a minute. We almost forgot to do something really important, actually. So, right now, I'm actually not sure what is the resolution of this. Um, however, I can tell you that if you render this out, actually, we can just do it. Oh, wait, this is gonna take a while, isn't it? Um, so, if you render this out, and then you bring it into the f into Photoshop, you're going to realize that while it's a nice image, the pixel resolution is not that great for overpainting, um, which we will get to see as soon as it is done rendering. There is a lot of fibers on here, and so I actually just don't even blame this thing for taking a long time, um, so, come on, new folder, um, I guess, I could just name it renders for now, renders, Let's see if it's a tiff, open, doop, file, open, oh, why is this here, uh, tutorials, fiber mesh, Renders. There we go. So, as you can see, it's a pretty nice render, but the second you get up close, you know, it's already pixelating. You know, like, it's pixelating here. And from experience, I can tell you, it's not very pleasant to paint on that. Even if you were to keep it here, 
and never zoom in, it's still not the most pleasant thing to paint on, honestly. And so, um, what I recommend you do is actually go into document. And you're going to see you can half the, the document size or double it. I'd hit double. Say yes. Control N is to clear your canvas. Um, this will be a lifesaver, especially if you find yourself in an instance where like you just have an artifact from some. Ooh, did not mean to do that. Um, especially if you just have kind of an artifact from something. So one of the great things about the custom is that they still save even though um, you double your, your document size. Which is great because if you you know made your custom before you you double your document size, you don't lose it. Um, you might have to scale it, but you know it's not the worst thing that could have happened to you. Let's be honest, it's not the worst thing. Um, so let us let's start rendering. Okay, so um, this render is kind of just the first render pass and this is a great opportunity for show you a mistake that you do not want to make because I just made a mistake actually. Um, I'm gonna let this render so that I can show it to you. But There we go. Okay. So you can see how all of a sudden Pen's head is a lot smaller on the canvas is because despite the fact that I doubled the canvas's size, I did not zoom in to kind of adjust for the for the larger canvas. Um, and so sorry. <laughs> the zoom is right here. Um, so now I'm gonna zoom in. And now I can see my full canvas. And so I'm just gonna frame pen again on that was actually kinda cool. I kinda like that for that giant eyeball for a second. That was kinda cool. Um So immediately you see that uh zebra started representing a lot less fibers because this is a huge, huge document with a lot of fibers. And I actually can tell you zebra is not going to be very happy in a bit. Actually, it's going to be fine. My computer is going to be mad at me pretty soon. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. We're, 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 we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. We're going to render these. And Pen is going to come out gorgeous. I think. <laughs> Alright. So, um, this, first, this first render pass is kind of just the basic pass. Um... It is very close to what I expect to be the final, and um, one of the advantages of doing this pass first is, one, um, remember what I said about being paranoid and how being paranoid about um, being paranoid about losing things is pretty good and, you know, wanting to be presentable at all stages is good. Um, if anything happens... I can show this, right? Like, I can show this as a concept. It's not the best, but I can show it, you know? It can get something done if, you know, a deadline is pushed, if your computer fries or whatever, you at least have something that kind of looks okay. Um, however, you know, we... Um, I'm going to quote Nick Fury here and say, um, you know, until such time as the world stops turning, we're going to act as though it intends to keep on turning. Um, and so we are going to do all of our renders. And I need an ambient occlusion pass. Render. Render properties. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion. I'm going to turn on self service scattering. I'm going to reduce the strength of the shadows, actually. I find that ZBrush gives um, very, very strong shadows for no reason, considering we have um, a, a shadow layer that 
we can actually use in Photoshop. If we really do want the stronger shadows, we can just use that. And so, right, putting ambient occlusion is going to significantly increase the render time. Um, but yeah, you want as much as you can to set yourself up in a way that regardless of where you are in the project, what you have to show is at least kind of presentable and interesting. Um, now, what I'm doing here is that I'm doing a couple of other material passes. Um, one thing I found in ZBrush is that um, because the materials sometimes, you know, they don't, they might not behave um, as you would necessarily expect they did. Some of them are, you know, they're very kind of like flamboyant and almost kind of not very realistic. But each of them have their uses, and their uses can be surprising. And honestly, they're pretty amazing and unique. Um, so going back to what I said earlier about um, illustration and concept being about communication, from a communication standpoint, um, the materials you use, um, what you make shiny, what you make matte, is um is a is actually a really really great way to let people know and understand um what is important what is um you know what they should be really paying attention to um and what they are looking at and i will give you an example of my favorite material to do this on and it didn't really render out, actually, because the document's so big. ZBrush is trying to just conserve itself. Um, so this material, what it does is that um, the top part of it is going to be blue, shiny. And the bottom of it is going to be more of this orange-green color, and also shiny. And why this is so awesome, so you can see blue, orangish. The reason why this is so awesome is I actually usually name this one color. Um, one of the reasons why this, like having this is so awesome is that we have Photoshop. Blue and that kind of orange color, they're complementary colors. We can use our color sliders to turn this into any pair of complementary colors that will split the model, make it very easy to read, very quick to read, very clear to read. Um, this is, in terms of communication, an amazing tool because it lets you visually organize your model. Um, and I think it's fantastic. Um, from a rendering perspective, I find it for Macs, it's actually a great way if you have a Mac where you don't really have a color scheme set up, but the value scheme is really nice. You can use this as a color layer just to kind of give it a little bit more life, um, a little bit more interest. So yeah, I will, I will get to show you this a lot more during the actual painting. Um, now we're doing a pass with um, matte colors. The reason why I like to have a bunch of shining materials, even with something that is very shiny, with a bunch of shiny materials, um, I will almost always have a render that is pure matte, for the simple reason that if I have this, using a clown pass, I can at any point make any material that I want go from... Um, super shiny to completely matte and that power is very 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 useful it's 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 incredibly strong and it gives you just a lot of control over what people see what people look at first how people see it and look at it um i just did a hair pass for fun i very rarely use these actually what i use for hair may um most often is um the skins actually because i like um i like it when 
there's a little bit of that fleshiness behind the hair or fur. Um, when this renders out, you will see what I'm talking about. It's getting there, it's getting there. These are a lot faster. Yay. There you go. Skin. Alright, so I think that is all the passes, alright? I might, you know what, I'm going to do a pass with a different light setup. Um, so there's one light coming here. I'm going to do a rim light set. Actually, I'm going to have it coming from the bottom. Alright, let's try this out. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, for my paintings, I don't... At least for character concepts, I don't always do the multiple light setting. Um, for the sheer sake of speed, I find it's um, faster, at least for me, to just have one source of light. Um, but in the instance, you know, an instance like this, I want this to look good. I have the time to make this look good. So I will just do one extra pass. Um, it doesn't hurt. And it also gives me a chance to kind of show you guys how you would go about this. Um, there are a number, a number of ways to render out, uh, 3D models for concept. Um... I've tried a great many of them. I've picked out my favorite ones. There are some that are not... I, I don't like them that much, but I will use them if if need be. Um, right now, my two favorites, however, are definitely ZBrush and KeyShot. By a long shot, I think ZBrush and KeyShot are probably one of the best combinations. Um, and each of them have their own rendering abilities. I mean... Um, I still render Max and Keyshot first. And this is. I might need this to be a little brighter. Or a lot brighter. Um, bottom. Then light. I might need this to be a lot stronger. Okay, that scares me when it just lights up like that. Um, and last match, oh, yeah, so, rendering. Um, yeah, there are a number of different ways to render. And, um, is there a best way? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there is, in fact, the best way to render. I think that there are simply ways that some people... I appreciate it. some people like more, I guess. Some people understand better. So, for example, um, I don't like to paint that much on my renders. I prefer doing most of the work in 3D and then rendering it out and doing a minimal amount of painting. I'll do, like, texture work in painting. But I know people who will, you know, and I've also tried this method out where you um, render out a very... Uh, basic model i mean like just forms really and then you paint the rest to just model it directly um i also just think a lot faster in 3d um oh this isn't bad um okay but rim light two um i think that i can concept Pretty well in 2D, but I think that, um, so, 